And hello everyone, welcome back to a new video. Okay, so today we will be learning more about, let me just there. So today we'll be learning more about string manipulation. But this time, instead of focusing on functions, we'll be focusing on string manipulation procedures. Now we'll do the difference between a function and a procedure again. Functions return something. Procedure does not. Procedure only executes steps, while a function will return a value after executing the steps. So yeah, let's get started. So then we can just go and add a button. We don't need more than a button. So yeet. Let me just double click on that. Okay, so we can just create ourselves a few variables. Variable is my str and let's just go um, s str1 and then s str2 which are both string and then we can go and add i num and i code which is integer and then just r num which is a real press control b and we should have a beautiful variable list okay so the first one we're going to learn is probably something we already know so let's just populate that first string we can make it so it says hello darkness my old friend okay and then we can just show message and SSTR1. Okay, so if we use the show message now, we obviously know what's going to happen. It's just going to display this. So the first one is one we probably already know, and it's called delete, which deletes a part of a string. So let's go delete. Ooh. And then first, as you can see, it's first the string, so it's SSTR1. And then where to start? Let's say we want to delete darkness. So hello is 5, and then there's a 6 character, and then there's darkness. Darkness is 8 characters long. So let's go and start from position 6, which is right here. And wait, let's make it position 7, because we want, don't want to delete this space. We want to keep that space. So we start here at the D, and then we want to delete nine characters. Why? Because darkness is eight characters plus the empty string right there, you know, the space. Or we could have just deleted this space, which would have worked the same, but you know, we don't want that. So then nine. Then if we run this, then we can just maybe bring that up here. And if we click this, as you can see, it says, hello, my old friend. So as you can see, we said select this string right here. And then from index 7, and it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6. And then from index 7, that's where the D is. So it includes the D itself. Delete 9 spaces. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5, 6, 7, 8, and then 9. So it did that. Okay, so that's delete. Now we can continue to one we haven't learned yet. So let's say I want to add darkness back in here right after the space. So then <coughs> I can go insert and then we can select the substring we want to add. In this case it's darkness with a space because we want the space between darkness and my and then the string we want to insert into, so it is str1 and then where we want to insert this so we want to insert it here where m is no, go away here where m is why where m is? because we don't want to move this space because whatever, wherever it's going to start is basically going to push everything up so if we're going to say right here after o where the space would have been 
we just push the space upwards. We don't want that. We want there to still be a space. Let's just make everything correct. So then we can say so that's five, six, seven. And if we run this, click the button. Hello darkness, my old friend. So what do we do? We just inserted the word darkness into the string. So the substring, the string itself, and then where? What's a substring you ask? Well, each word in here is a substring. It's part of the string. This is the string. And hello is a substring of the string itself. So that's a substring. So this one we already know. It's pretty basic. So inum, or so SSTR2, that's going to become, let's say, did 22 okay? Now we want to validate that it is, in fact, a number. So if we go val, and we can say the string we want to validate, uh, what type it should be, it should be of type integer, and then the code it should return. So, basically, this will just validate if this is an integer. If it's an integer, then I code will become zero. But if it's not an integer, I code will become the index of which it stopped being an integer. For in this case, let's say we added D right here. So I code will then become one, two, three, because this is where the problem began, because that can't be converted into an integer. If we remove that, there will be one, two, and both of them are integers, so this will be zero. So if we output int to string I code we uh, should make this string two. Sorry about that. We run this again. We click the button. It returns zero. And if we were to add a, let's say, D in the middle of the two, we try and run it again. Click the button. It returns two because one, two. Okay. And the same can be said if you want a real value, so 22.22. .22. And if we were to change this from inum to rnum, we should get zero because now it's testing to see if it returns a real value. Click the button. As you can see, it does return a, zero, a real value, so it returns zero. If we were to put a t right there, we run it again. Click the button. It returns five because one, two, three, four, five. T is at index five. And that's all the string manipulation procedures I wanted to cover today. We basically just learned one, I'm very sorry, but we did go over a few we did do in the past, which is good because we do tend to forget. Thank you all for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and learned something new. See you all in the next